What's up guys, I'm OJ bringing us a brand new episode of Washington Station, uh, best station for Washington Football Nation. I apologize for not bringing a video on Wednesday, but it's just not a lot to talk about with the bye week and we didn't do any trades or much of anything, so it's kind of it's kind of slow day. I didn't really have anything to talk about, so I just voided that day and I was also doing some work on a little project that I've been a part of, but I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to talk about it. It's a little project that I was that I worked on about over a month ago, and I had to go back and do some more work on it. It's, it's pretty cool. Hopefully, y'all will see it uh, relatively soon. I think maybe in the next couple months, maybe? In the next month or so? I don't know. I'm not in charge of when it comes out or um, where it will be put out, but I do know it's cool, and y'all should definitely try to check it out when it comes out. Selfish plug or project. I'm not even done. I'm going back in a couple weeks to do a slight uh, stuff for advertising. Cool. All right. Anyway, um, so obviously Sunday we have our rematch against the Giants. It beat us last time because when we came close, but we lost because we didn't make the two-point conversion. And uh, yeah, so and I'm gonna go ahead and say this because I was gonna say, oh, the Giants are gonna beat Washington. Well, actually, Washington is predicted to beat the Giants by a lot of people, which I'm surprised since they actually like, um, like stayed head to head with the Bucks for most of that, for pretty much the whole game on um, Monday night. But I think a lot of people realize what it is, and people are like, oh, we're not, we don't believe in superstition, we don't believe in analytics. You know, that's fine. It's fine to an extent, but some things it's just like. And that's just too real to not be true. And one of those is, whenever Tom Brady faces the New York Giants, something just goes bad for him, and it just doesn't work out for him. So, it's kind of weird, kind of whack, but for some reason he just doesn't do good. Ever since the David Tyreek catch has his burn to his brain, he just doesn't do amazing against them. And also, they're, they are a little banged up in Tampa Bay. And switch wide they're getting Antonio Brown. Now, some of you don't like him personally. I'm excited to see Antonio Brown back out there, see what he can do, see what he's capable of. Hopefully, he keeps his head on right. It looks like he's on a good train right now. So let's just hope for the best. Um, we, um, as humans, we should wish nothing but uh, healing for him because we know this is definitely a problem that um, the concussion from Vontaze Burfley helped induce. So. We um, want to wish the best for him. I hope this is healing and recovery. Um, no, Tom, Tom Brady and TB12 have hooked him up with a life coach and some other resources to help him through this. It looks like he's really taking advantage of him. And it um, looks like he's on the right track. Uh, especially because he knows how, how much of a short leash he is on down in Tampa Bay. If you got that reference, you're good. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about this week against the Giants. Uh, first and foremost, we know what happened this week. Um, Landon Collins is out with the ACL. Cameron Curl is going to be starting at strong safety. And with that, awesomely, uh, a captain spot opened. And Terry McLaurin was surprised at practice by a unanimous vote for him to be um, team captain. Now, we saw in the video where I was talking about our win against Dallas. I showed that video where the post-game speech of Terry was like, we're on the right track. And I think that really resonated. And... You know, um, they said that he's one that doesn't like to speak out quite as much, but he is a leader in and out of the locker room. And I think you know, maybe he's taking this leadership role more and is speaking up more, which it seems like he's doing. So I'm happy to see him get the captain badge on him. And I'm also Morgan Moses got the captain badge, which is awesome. It was kind of one talked about a whole lot. It kind of surprised me in the Dallas game. But, you know, it's really showing that he's a leader. He's been, a, he's been there the longest of anybody on that O-line. Um, even longer than Brandon Sheriff by a year, I think. And um, so, yeah, he knows the ropes. He's been there for a long time, and I, I'm really happy that he got a captain badge also. Now, talking about the actual game itself, I see us winning. Um, Giants did pick up a good receiver in Dante Pettis, one of the 49ers. Um, do not expect Steven Sims to be playing this week, although he is back at practice. Um, maybe we'll see some Robert Foster in there. That'd be cool. Um, yeah, it's a really, that's a lot of what I said in the last time. I think the offense, you know, Dallas is a piss poor team. I like to see them, even though we're not going to, I like to see a game between them and the Jets because I think the Jets could actually get a win. Um, because, yeah. So, 
I think we're gonna win. Um, the game against Dallas it was a very good chemistry building game. It's like, yes, the Cowboys played awful. The Cowboys, the Giants won't play that bad, probably. But I think that built a lot of chemistry for what is really special, which is Kyle Allen and Terry McLaurin. And hopefully, uh, we'll see more of that this week against the Giants. I think we could go deep on them and uh, really attack them with Terry. And if, and Steven Smith probably won't be back. But if Robert Foster, who's supposed to be a really speedy guy, if he can draw some defenders off just with his speed, he's not a big name. But if he has good speed, that's all we need. All right? So, I think that will be a big key part of our offense. I think also Tony Gibson just getting constantly worked in there. I was going to say we overwork him all day. There you can't overwork him. I think you have to really push him because he's just a hard driver. Him and J.D. McKissick. And don't even forget about Peyton Barber. Those two have been great. Um, J.D. McKissick and Antonio Gibson more special um, in a more special light. But um, all three of them have been very big on impact in this season. And uh, I think Antonio Gibson, we're going to use some uh, screen plays, some pass plays, some tosses, and just run it up the gut, you know. At the heart of it, if you can run up to gut, you're doing a good job. You want to give up uh, three to five, about four to five hearts every play to constantly move the ball and drain the clock, which I think is something big we need to do in this game is drain the clock, keep the ball out of New York's hands because they have drives where they can just move it downfield. Even if they're throwing nobodies, they're still moving it down the field, which is crazy. So we need to really be heads up and um, drain that clock and hold on to it as much as possible. And uh, with the healthy healthier O-line now. I think that's very much possible. Defense-wise, you know, the deal, uh, attack up front with the Chase Young, Deron Payne, John Allen, Montez Sweat, and Kerry can, you know, just make sure they're really attacking up front. Uh, keep Daniel Jones in the pocket. Don't let him escape because it gets scary when he escapes. Uh, he's fast. He's faster than I think any of us thought he was. Um, shockingly fast. I think we just need to keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't escape the pocket because when he does, bad things can happen. Eagles found that out. Even he ran on against the Bucks, So we need to be really – defense this week is really being heads up and making sure he stays in the pocket behind the line of scrimmage and doesn't get anywhere far of the way. Because I think um, defense back-wise will be all right. Um, even in our first game against them, you know, he got some good passes. But a lot of plays where they, where they move the ball forward on drives and move the chains – was when he ran it. So keeping him in that pocket and then making him um, kind of scared in there, I think is a good thing for us. And uh, I think uh, now Chase Young has had a week off just so we ain't got that fire in him. I think it's gonna be really cool. I think it's gonna be a really good game. I mean, tough fault. It's gonna be uh, probably who has the ball last game or, uh, yeah, so I think that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna come down to the wire. I hope it's gonna be a good one. Uh, definitely gonna be done in the trenches, you know. What team stays behind the line more in the game is the one that'll lose. I mean, it sounds basic, but it's it's our game plan for him. We gotta keep him behind the line of scrimmage, and right, then keep Kyle Allen behind the scrimmage because Kyle Allen is not super fast, but he can move it if he needs to. So I think we're gonna win. I think we'll get the dub. We'll move to three and five in a horror division. The fight is still going strong, guys. Don't lose hope. So. I hope you'll have a great day. Make sure to stay safe. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Make sure that bell button to notify every single time I upload a brand new episode of Washington Station. Be sure to comment down below your thoughts. Uh, I just launched a merch store. Uh, make sure to check that out. The link it will be in this description also. Um, there's no Washington Station merch in there yet, but it will be soon. I'm working on it. Um, how I can do it legally without using a Washington logo because that could be big trouble for me. So we're going to do it in a nice legal way. And once I get that done, then uh, Washington Station merch will be uploaded to the site. Make sure you have a great day. Make sure to subscribe. Uh, let's go Football Nation. And I'm out. Peace.